Okay, in section 5.1, we're going to address the second major topic of calculus, um, which is to calculate areas underneath curves. So the first major topic was really derivatives, which helped us figure out the rate of change of a curve, or um, like slopes of tangent lines. Um, the second major topic is trying to figure out the area underneath a curve, and this is actually going to be related to derivatives in some way. Um, we'll see that later on when we cover something called the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, so for now, if we want to calculate the area underneath a curve, let's say y is equal to x squared plus 1, the first thing you could do is try to look up formulas for it, like the area underneath a circle or the area inside of a circle or the area of a trapezoid or triangles. Those are well known. But the areas underneath parabolas, you're going to be hard pressed to find a formula for that, like just in the front cover of a geometry book or something. So the way that we can do this is to estimate this area by subdividing and making rectangles. Okay, now this is not a square shape or a rectangular shape, but what I can do is cut this into sections. So I want to find this area from zero to four. Okay, again, it doesn't fit underneath like a one big rectangle or a circle or something like that, but I can cut it into say four sections and calculate the height of the rectangles simply by plugging it into the function that gives me a height multiplied by a width. And this would just give me a bunch of areas of rectangles. And we can add up the areas of those rectangles. And then um, that would be our approximation. Now, it's not a great approximation because you can see that I didn't cover all these little triangular areas. Like I didn't count that, I didn't count that, I didn't count that, I didn't count that, okay? So how can I make this approximation better? Well, I could use more rectangles. Instead of just using four rectangles, I could use, say, eight rectangles. So the first rectangle would only go to there, and then I'd plug in another one, and calculate that, and on and on and on and on and on. Okay, so if I used eight rectangles instead, you can see that this will be a better approximation. Now I don't have quite as much error there. Now, better than eight rectangles would be 16 rectangles. Better than 16 would be a thousand. Better than a thousand would be a million. And if I used more and more and more, my approximation would get better and better and better. So you can imagine if we have the same shape and we're using, say, a, a billion rectangles, each rectangle would be so skinny, it would basically look like a straight line, and we would color in this whole thing with very little error, okay? It would still have some error, but uh, we could just get that better and better by just using more and more. And we can use more and more, more using the limit. We would just let the number of rectangles go off to infinity. And that's eventually what we're going to do in a later section. Okay, so in doing these computations, um, the first thing we need to know is how wide are our rectangles going to be? And there's a nice formula for this, and you're definitely going to need to know this for the rest of the section, um, that if we're doing the area from A to B for some function, then the number of rectangles is simply going to be b minus a over n, where n is the number of rectangles. All right. So let's look at that estimation again. So y is equal to x squared plus 1. And we're going to estimate this area underneath the curve from 0 to 4 using something um, these rectangle sums are called Riemann sums. Okay, so that's how you pronounce that um, word there, Riemann sums. It's named after a mathematician named Riemann. Okay, and there's a couple different types of Riemann sums that we're going to look at. We're going to look at left Riemann sums, right Riemann sums, and midpoint Riemann sums. Okay, so <laughs> left Riemann sums, I'm going to abbreviate this with an L. That means left Riemann sums. 4 is just going to be the number of rectangles. Okay. All right. And um, again, how are we going to find this? Well, we need to know how wide is each one of these rectangles. Well, delta x is going to be b minus a, so 4 minus 0, over the number of rectangles. So 4 minus 0, 4 divided by 4 is 1. Okay. So each one of these are going to be 1 wide. Okay. And then to calculate the height of my rectangles, what I'm going to do is take the left side of each one of these intervals. So I'm going to take 0 and plug it in. I'm going to take 1 and plug it in. 
two and plug it in and three and plug it in. Notice I'm not going to take four and plug it in because that's not the left side of this last little interval. Okay, so what do I mean by plug it in? Well, I'm literally just going to take it and plug it in to my function x squared plus one, and that gives me a height of the rectangle. The width of that first rectangle is one. Okay, so the area of that first rectangle is just one times one or one. Okay, this Riemann sum is going to add up four areas of rectangles. The next rectangle is going to have a height of plugging in one into our function, so one squared plus one. Again, same width, so height times the width. Okay, and we're just going to move on and on and on. Plug in all my left hand sides of these intervals. Okay, and you'll notice I have a total of four rectangle areas that I'm adding up here. All right, so we add up all these numbers and we get 18. Okay, so our approximation of the area underneath this curve using a left sided Riemann sum with four rectangles is 18. Again, we are under counting. We did not count all this area that I'm going to shade in blue here. Okay, so my area is bigger than 18. Okay. All right, let's look at a right Riemann sum. Okay, now again, um, well, this is new. This R is going to stand for a right sided Riemann sum. Again, the four is the number of rectangles. Okay, and then um, again, we can calculate delta x because we're using the same number of rectangles and it's the same interval, the delta x should still be one. So you'll notice that I'm counting by ones starting at zero. So I start at zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so those are my endpoints. Okay, and now for each one of these intervals, so this first interval right here, instead of using the left side, zero, I'm gonna use the right side, one. Okay, for the next interval, instead of using the left side, one, I'm gonna use the right side, two. The next side, I'm gonna use three. The next interval, I'm going to use four. So I'm going to use all those right-sided intervals. Again, what I mean by using them is going to take that one, plug it in. There's that first rectangle. Two, plug it in. There's the second rectangle. Three, plug it in. There's the third rectangle. Four, plug it in. And notice that I'm not drawing to the right here. I'm drawing back over the interval. So there's that rectangle. Okay, and that's over counting this time. You can see that I've counted more area than underneath the parabola. Like I got all this extra area. So this is gonna give me a um, high end estimate. Okay, so my height, okay, I'm gonna do a little trick here actually. My width, you'll notice is one every time. So rather than writing it every time, I can actually just factor it out and then just add up all the different heights. Okay, so what are these heights? Well, the first one is plugging in one. So there's height one. Second one's plugging in two. Okay. Third height is plugging in three. Fourth height is plugging in four. Okay. And now this is just a bunch of arithmetic. I add up and square all these numbers, and I got 34 beforehand. Okay. So 34 is an overestimate, 18 is an underestimate. So um, our area is somewhere between 18 and 34. Now, the last type of Riemann sum that I mentioned was a midpoint Riemann sum. Okay, a midpoint <coughs> Riemann sum, which I'm going to abbreviate with an M for midpoint, okay, is, again, I cut it into four equal intervals, okay, just like I have drawn there. And this time, instead of plugging in the left side or the right side on each interval, I'm going to plug in the midpoint. So halfway between 0 and 1 is 0 0.5. Halfway between 1 and 2 is 1.5. Then 2.5 on the third interval, and the last one, 3.5. Those are our midpoints. Okay. Now the thing about the midpoint is that usually it gives a better estimation right off the bat because it underestimates on this side, or overestimates on this side, underestimates on this side, and those two things kind of cancel each other out. Not exactly but it does give us a slightly better um, approximation quicker. Okay, so again, each one of these rectangles has a width of one. I can factor that out, okay? And then 
my heights are gotten by taking like 0.5 and plugging it into my function. So there's the first height. Here's my second height. Third height. And fourth height. Okay. All right, again, this is just pure arithmetic now, easy to do with a calculator, and we get 25. So my area underneath this curve is approximately 25. Now, I can't tell if this is an overestimate or an underestimate. I just know that's about 25. Okay. All right, now you might wonder why we would want to do areas underneath curves. Okay, there's actually a ton of applications of it. Like Calculus 2 will show you all kinds of applications. But a very early application of this is that it can give you an area. Uh, the area can give you a displacement, which is similar to a distance traveled. So in particular, if you have a velocity curve, so if your function is representing the velocity of a particle at any given time, then the area underneath that curve from one time to another is the displacement of your object. Displacement is just a fancy term for distance traveled. Um, it, it allows a negative distance traveled in physics, but basically that's what's going on. If your velocity is above the x-axis, it will give you a distance traveled. Okay, so I want to show you how to find these uh, Riemann sums because you will be asked to find these on your next exam. Um, and they're pretty easy to do if, if you know what you're doing. All right, so I'll show you exactly how to do one of these. So use L8 to estimate the displacement of an object with velocity v of t is equal to t cubed on the interval 0 to 2. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is find your delta x, or in this case, really a delta t. And again, this is the formula b minus a over n. Okay. So the very first thing, first find this. Okay. So this is 2 minus 0 over the number of rectangles, which is 8, or 1 fourth. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is just start a number line. Okay. Second, I'm going to start a number line. And I'm going to start at the left side, 0. Okay. So that's the left side of my interval. And I'm going to count by 1 quarters, or about by this delta t. Okay. Now, 1 quarter is 0.25. So 0.25, and I'm going to add another 0.25. Okay, if you prefer, you can use fractions. Um, another quarter, 0.75. Uh, plus another quarter, 1, 1 1.25, 1.5, 1.75. I'm just adding this delta t every time, all the way until I reach my other side. Okay. All right, next I'm going to pick which one of these points I'm going to use, okay? So on each interval, so on this first interval right here, I'm going to use the left side. So I'm going to use zero, okay? On my second interval, okay, I'm going to use the left side. So I'm going to use 0.25. On the next interval, left side, and on and on and on, okay? All the way through. And that 1.75 is coming from the left side of that last interval. Now you'll notice that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's going to give me 8 rectangles. Okay? Now if you want, you can draw t cubed over the top. You really don't need to on a problem like this. If you're just finding L8, you don't really need that. Okay? You just need to know that you're going to take each one of these circled numbers and plug it into that velocity function. Okay, so L8 is going to be, again, it's just a height times a width, height times a width, height times a width. So it's going to be 1 quarter is your width, okay, times the height. And you're getting the height by taking that first number and plugging it into T cubed. Okay, then a quarter times taking that second number and plugging it into T cubed. And then on and on and on and on. Okay. Now all the way down until you reach the end. Okay. 
All right, now math trick that you can use, so each one of these is again a width times a height. The math trick you can use is you have this common width every single time, so you can factor it out to the front. Let's see if it loads, yep. So you can see I factored that 1 fourth out to the front, and then I'm just adding up all these heights, okay? So I did this and I got 3.0625, okay? All right, so that's part one. Part two, we're gonna look at some uh, very useful uh, notation, and we have some formulas in there that you definitely need for your notes, so make sure to watch part two.